Kevin Oneno Hastings is going to be showing off the monologue, also utilizing the Korg, King Korg. Kevin Hastings, Kevin Oneno Hastings, excuse me. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me out. And uh, today I've got just a really brief demonstration of the Korg monologue for you. And also I'm going to be playing the King Korg Black uh, with a little bit of a performance. But before I get to the performance part, I would love to just show you a little bit of what the monologue actually does. So if you've noticed, it's rather tiny. It's only two octaves long. So the main thing about it is that you can use it as a sequencer, and you can, it has a beautiful 16-step programmer in it, which I'm about to demo for you. So I've gone to an initial patch, which means this is just what it sounds like when you start from the bare bones with nothing programmed. And my goal is to make music out of this keyboard. So I'm going to show you the three types of oscillators that it has. I'm going to show you a little bit of the, the filter, the mixer section, the envelope section, and then the sequencer section, and then I'm going to perform something for you. So this is going from bare bones to something that hopefully sounds like music. All right, so you have two oscillators. This first one starts with a sine wave, and you have a shape knob right here on this one, so you can hear what the shape knob does. Just gives it extra grittiness, extra brightness on some of the sound. There's a square wave on oscillator one. And finally, you have a triangle wave. I really like this triangle wave, so I'm going to use this one for today. Now under my mixer section, I'm going to turn oscillator one down. Now I'm going to turn oscillator two up. So you have two oscillators that you can work with. The second one starts with a saw wave. It has a triangle wave and a noise generator. And it kind of sounds crazy by itself, but I, use, I utilize white noise a lot when I'm trying to shape really specific and especially analog sounding keyboards. So I'm going to use the triangle wave on the second oscillator. And I'm just going to drop it down an octave. Bring a little shape to it. And now let's hear these two together. So first, I'm going to show you oscillator one one more time. And here's with oscillator two. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you is the envelope section. So this envelope has three types of envelopes. The first default envelope is basically bypassing the knobs. So it just works when you press it on and when you release. Pretty immediate. As soon as you go to type number two, you can actually utilize these knobs. So now my attack time will become much slower as I turn up the knob. And likewise, the decay knob, wherever that is set. Or I can make it shorter. So you have a lot of shape control. Then the last uh, style of envelope, which I'm going to utilize, turns the decay knob into kind of a sustain knob. First of all, are there any keyboard nerds in the room like myself, or am I the only one? OK, good. A couple people speak nerd language. That's awesome. So this basically takes the decay knob and turns it into a sustain knob. So now it will have a much more plucky effect. So essentially, it doesn't matter how long I hold it down for. I can continue to sustain, but it will eventually go away. And with that being said, last thing I'm going to show you is the sequencer. As soon as I hit record here, it's going to ask me what notes do I want to program onto these 16 steps. So it's not actually asking me to play a riff in time. It's just asking me to play notes up to 16, and then it's going to start to loop them. So I'm going to select these notes. Let me do that one more time. Shift, rest, erases it, hit record. So that way, if you have large hands like myself, <laughs> you can actually, you know, erase if you make a mistake or anything. You can also go into one individual step and change that note. 
So now as soon as I hit play, it's already looping it. I'm going to select my magic BPM of 111. And lastly, lastly, there's a button right here called key trigger. And as soon as I press that, it lets me transpose that sequence onto any starting note. And now, as soon as you hold down this keyboard button, that will then sustain your selected pitch indefinitely. And as you can see, it's not set to any kind of a grid, so it does matter when you actually trigger the note. But with that being said, we are now ready to perform. So I'm going to switch into performance mode, and we're going to get this going. And sound man, if I could get a little bit more of the monologue in this monitor, that'd be awesome. All right, cool. So with that being said, thank you guys for coming out to this demo. I'm going to play for about the next four minutes, and then we have a, a question and answer thing going on outside. So if you guys have any more questions about this, feel free to let me know. If you want to find me online, my social media is I am Oneno, and my website is IamOneno.com. And Oneno is just a palindrome on the number one, so it's O-N-E-N-O. -E All right, guys, thanks again for having me out. I'll see you on the other side.
I'll see you later. Thanks for coming out.